Hey, it's Wabbit. Hope you're well. Uh, if you don't use iPad, iOS, or you don't like using MIDI controllers to control the parameters with inside of your apps, then this is not a video for you. Feel free to click away. Also, if you decide to stick around and you see things in here that you have other suggestions of whether it's different apps or even a different process, please, in the comments, uh, leave that down below. I am not saying what I'm about to demonstrate to you is the only way. It's just a way that I found that works. And hopefully this can help um, others who might be interested uh, in this process. I'm also going to be going over this uh, as if someone has never done this before. Um, so especially when I get into the app, I'll be kind of, you know, here, go there, this and that type of thing. I'm going to do my best to avoid getting into the weeds in some spots. Uh, and I possibly am not going to cover everything. So I'm sure there are going to be questions, um, but I'll do the best I can. And, and hopefully this can help you out. The other thing is um, I am only working with the gear that I have. Um, so if you get through this video and you're curious, hey, will it work with this controller? <laughs> I don't have it, so I can't answer that question. Um, but I also am aware there, there may be other controllers out there that do more or a better job than the launch control because let's be honest this is getting a bit long in the tooth as much as i really enjoy this so i'm always open to suggestions uh, if there's something um, that is a better option let's talk about the goal of what i want to do so what i'm going to try and demonstrate or uh, hopefully if this all works out is using the launch control to control multiple applications within aum and then create a template and the idea is uh, whether you have two or up to eight apps, uh, you can do all this setup one time and then come back to it, load a template, and it just saves you time as well too. Now on the launch control, I've got this little user button. And when I push that, you'll notice all these light up down below. So if I push on that button, I'm on track one. That corresponds to what you'll see here when I get into AUM. I have not tried to use the factory. I don't think I can manually program that. But again, correct me if I'm wrong. I may be able to go inside of components. Um, so maybe there's 16. Um, but for right now, I'm focusing on eight. And again, that might be um, a bit overkill. But, uh, you know, as we in this hobby space, we like to push things uh, to the limit. Let's talk about the gear and connection. So obviously the launch control here, uh, USB cable coming out. Uh, the other end is going into, you can barely see it. This is a USB dongle. This is an iPad mini type C port. And then I'm going to be using, um, AUM. I am screen recording this. So in post, I will, uh, do some things cause I know this is probably not in focus the greatest, <laughs> just using the iPhone. So I'll, I'll do my best, uh, in post. I'll probably speed up a couple things that you really don't need to see. And hopefully, um, it will, uh, help you out. Okay. So let's go ahead and launch AUM. So I'm not going to go super in-depth on this app. Again, I encourage you, if you've never seen this app before, there's a lot of great tutorials out there on YouTube. So please, uh, if, if you're not familiar with this, it might be a good idea to go check that out. Um, but basically, uh, what I want to do is uh, I need to find some way for this demo to get notes into the apps that I'm going to be loading. Now, I could hook up a keyboard and do this. I'm going to use what's called a MIDI sequencer here with an AUM. And I'm going to click this plus button, and I've got audio MIDI. I'm going to click on MIDI, and now I have a track that I can add a sequencer to. And I'm going to add two, and it'll make sense a little bit later on. So I click that plus button, audio unit MIDI processor, and then I'm going to look for fugue machine. And we'll do that one more time. Okay, these are my MIDI sequencers. And again, you might be able to do this with just one app. So, you know, in the comments, feel free to leave some other options in there. Now I'm going to create eight different uh, synths or pianos. So I click on the plus. This time I do audio. I've got a new track here. Click on the plus and I go to plugins, audio unit extension. And I'm just going to pick eight apps and then I'll come back and program. So I'll do the exact same thing.
All right, now I've got my eight uh, synth slash piano apps up and running. Okay, so there's two things I need to do now. First, I need to, well, a couple things I should say. I need to go inside a Fugue and uh, set up a couple things. So I'm gonna open up the first one and I'm gonna go into my settings and I'm going to, Basically, Fugue has four playheads, and I can send each playhead to an individual channel. So playhead one is going to go to channel one. Playhead two, I want to send that to channel two. Playhead three, channel three, playhead four, channel four. So what that's doing is these first four apps are considered channels, so one, two, three, four. And then because I have eight, I'm going to come to the second instance, and playhead one will go to five, and then you can figure out what we're going to do with the rest. Okay, now I just need to paint in some notes, and what I put in doesn't really matter. And I want to go ahead and I'm going to use the term arm these tracks because these will play at varying speeds. And I do the same thing here. Punch in some notes. And we get those set up. All right. Now I need to come into these apps. Now, there again, there's many ways to do this. I probably could do the same thing in here. I'm going to come in and click on the hamburger icon to the left of each app. I've got this MIDI input, and now I have two instances of Fugue Machine. So this at M1 colon one, that's the first instance, and then two, that's the second instance. So these first four, I wanna come in here, and this is where I connect the MIDI source. So playhead one, I only wanna to listen to that one, and then I do the exact same thing for the rest of them. This is kind of my MIDI mapping that I'm doing right now. And now this is five, six, seven, eight. So again, I want to go to the second instance and then do the same thing. Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to mute all these. And before I continue on, I just want to make sure I've got audio. So I'm gonna hit play. And let's just unmute. And I can just take a look at the little dots here, the lights, LEDs, and I can tell that I've got audio coming through. Now there's one more thing that I need to do before I start programming the launch control, and it'll make sense here once I do that. I need to have each of these tracks only listening to certain channels in order for this to really work. So I'm gonna click on the icon again, MIDI inputs, and then if I slide down, here's my channel filter. This is important, so I wanna do none and channel one. This is gonna to correspond to the launch control. So let me pause for a minute. If I don't do this, because I'm only going to program one knob per channel. In the, in, in the reality, you would probably program a bunch. And if I didn't specify on each one which one to listen to, I might start getting some bleeding of, of MIDI um, notes and noise. And again, that's where I, I don't want to misspeak. But when I was doing it and I left all my channels on, I was getting a lot of feedback and, and just some weirdness. So again, this is where those of you who've done this before, if you find you can do it another way, please in the comments, if you, if, you, know, if you can leave everything lit up, I'm just finding in my experience, if I do it this way, I, I don't get that. Because when I was switching from, from different tracks, I was getting these weird feedback noises. All right, so same thing here. Scroll down and here's a little shortcut in AUM that uh, many have been using. Instead of you know doing all this, just do none and then select your channel. So I'll do that for the rest of them. Okay. 
Now I've got all that set up. Now the next step is I need to program the launch control to the app that I want to do. So again, I want to make sure I'm in user track one that's highlighted and I want to come in here. Now there are different ways to do this in terms of MIDI learn. I like to use uh, what I call the built-in uh, feature within AUM, uh, or you could go into the app if you want to, if it's available and do MIDI learn that way. Uh, but let me back up. So I tap on the app and then there's a folder here, that next icon, kind of the, it's called the MIDI controls. And then I want to go to no MIDI source, tap to connect. And I want that to go to launch control XL. And then when I come back, there's this little icon here. When I tap on it, it's blue, it's wiggling, and it's asking me to tweak any parameter to show its MIDI control. So I'm going to focus on uh, this rate one here, and I'm going to program it to this upper left-hand knob. So in some apps, you can just tap. In other apps, you actually have to engage with the app. So when I move this, this found control windows comes up. And I'm not going to focus on anything else on here except learn. And now it's waiting for me to do something on the launch control. I turn this knob. You're going to see some values populate here. Channel 1, CC 13. That's where, that's where it comes into that channel 1 that I was telling you about. You can say done. I can tweak that. And that's working. So let's exit out of here. And then I want to go to the next app. That's going to be on channel two, so user two, and open this up, same process. And I'm going to focus on this shape for oscillator one, engage that. It's now asking me to, once I hit learn, channel two, CC14, say done. And then I just repeat the process, so three, and I'll speed this up in post and we'll be back shortly okay all right so now i've got everything programmed i've got everything routed so the next test is let's go ahead and hit play i'm just going to demonstrate two of the apps and kind of show you what's happening so we'll unmute that one so i'm on user track eight this is track eight, and I have it mapped to the frequency. Let's unmute this one. Still controlling that. So I have the filter on Trooper. Let's go to user seven. So it's not affecting track number eight. And I could just march down the line. So really that's where the use case comes in. So as I'm doing whatever is in here, uh, if I need to go to track four, track three, it's just a push of the button user, make sure that I'm using the appropriate knob and then we're off to the races. Again, the reality, I would be programming a bunch more, but I just want to kind of demonstrate how this works. Now, the next and final step is you've done all this work <laughs> uh, for this. This is what going now, 17, 18 minutes. It's creating a template because you don't have to come back and do this every single time. So we click on the hamburger icon and I come to save and you can rename this whatever you want. We'll call this massive template. And when you say done, it'll save it. All right, so let's say you're done doing whatever you have to do, done for the day. Uh, we'll go ahead and close this out. Let's actually go ahead and force close. And, you know, day's done, crash, wake up next day, you're ready to resume what you're working on. You got all your equipment loaded up, launch AUM. And we'll click on the hamburger icon. We'll come to files. Now they call them sessions in AUM. I call them templates, tomato, tomato. Click on that and we'll search for the one we created, uh, massive template, and let's let that load up. It'll take a little bit. 
So you see we've got our two instances of Fugue Machine. We've got all of our apps there. I'm just going to again focus on these two. Let's go ahead and hit play. And let's go to user seven. There's that effect on Trooper. Now I want to go to the last one on Xeon. And there you go. So that's really what I wanted to uh, demonstrate for you. And, and the big takeaway is, is creating that template. You don't want to have to sit down for 15, 20 minutes. Again, I know this is a bit extreme having eight apps. And, and here's the thing. You can swap out. So um, if you've got drum computers or drum machines or if you've got pianos, whatever it is, as long as it has the ability to do some MIDI learn, you can kind of go uh, crazy as, as much as you want. But the idea is create that template. That way, next time, boom, you're off and running and you're saving yourself a lot of time. I really, really hope this uh, helps someone. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions about this, um, feel free to answer down below. I'll do my best to try and answer. Um, and if you have other suggestions, whether they're different processes, you know, ways to do this, um, and, and I know that there are different ways to link things with an AUM. There's no one right way you find what works best for you. Anyway, um, and I, also if anybody's curious, I haven't done this in Drambo. I would imagine the same type of thing, um, but I can't answer that question because I have not uh, done that yet. All right. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. Please be kind to yourself. Get out there and have a lot of fun and just get started.